Hey friends, welcome back to the latest episode of Hot News. Hope you're doing well. Hope you've enjoyed your little break of Hot News. We haven't done an episode in a while, but we're back at it today. We've got some we've got some news stories. We got some tech news for you, my friends, and some gaming news. And we have today's video sponsor, which is actually a product that I have been using for many years, and that is our friends over at Synergy who have an application that you can install on multiple devices so that you can use a keyboard and mouse wherever you are to control another computer. You do it all from one location without exclusive hardware, without trying to buy a KVM switch or cluttering your desk with multiple keyboard and mice. It's a crazy situation if you're ever trying to run more than one computer on one desk or let's say you have a situation like I do here in this office where I have a computer behind me, I have a computer on my lap, and then I also have a production computer right over there. And so I have to control all of those at the same time quite often. And what Synergy allows me to do is to make sure that I can do that all from one computer using their application. This is perfect for streamers who have a dedicated gaming and streaming rig. You can control both at the same time. Synergy allows you to control two devices at once, whether you're on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or even Raspberry Pi, you're good to go with them. And if you get a basic license, it's only gonna cost you $29 for lifetime use, no pay per month stuff and Synergy One Pro, which includes SSL encryption, will only cost you $39. So click the link in the video description, get started with Synergy so that you can control multiple devices at once. I use it all of the freaking time. It is such a productivity saver. Even if I do have keyboard and mice set up on each computer, I can at least set up this one, which is far away from that desk, and make sure that everything's good to go. So check them out at the link in the video description. But you know who you shouldn't check out? That's Intel's marketing team because they just, they think that things should be compared that shouldn't be compared, such as their i5-9600KF. Well, oh, my friends, don't you know that that beats the $399 processor of the Ryzen 7 3800X? At least that's what they're claiming in a slide that they're promoting in China, showing off that the i5 is better than the 3800X, but that's not even that. The i3-9350KF is better than the Ryzen 5 20 or 3600X. And the reason they're claiming this, even though obviously from all of the benchmarks that you've seen since Ryzen 3000 has come out, shows that they are very admirable processors. One of the reasons Intel is even claiming this in their Chinese slides is that they can overclock to five gigahertz and beyond. Oof. Don't you know, you don't get that type of overclocking performance with Ryzen 3000. No, AMD decided to give you better instructions per clock so you don't need as much frequency, but Intel gives you all of those gigahertz. So if you want five gigahertz, Intel's the better way to go. Well, this isn't the first time that Intel's marketing team has necessarily done things that are while slightly true, less than upper hand when it comes to marketing themselves. This is oddly reminiscent to what happened, what was it, last week or a week and a half ago when the 10900 series came out for their high-end desktop chips and they moved the embargo to just be six hours ahead of the Threadripper 3000 chip so that they couldn't be directly compared to AMD because they were gonna lose. Well, now they can be directly compared to AMD, but they're gonna win because they got five gigahertz when you overclock it on most chips, but AMD doesn't got that. Mm -mm. And you know what else AMD doesn't got? 14 nanometer supply issues. That's something that's truly stuck to Intel with a bunch of companies continuing to get a little feisty with Intel when it comes to how uh, lacking they've been in producing their 14 nanometer chips with companies such as Dell and HP even pointing to Intel for being the reason why they're losing out on revenue, saying that they can't sell as many units because Intel's just simply not providing them with the hardware to sell their goods. Well, in order to potentially alleviate that, Intel has come up with a brand new strategy. Let's bring back a chip that we initially released in 2013 from the Haswell era. Yes, my friends, it's the 22 nanometer Pentium G3420. You see, why would you want a 10 nanometer chip when you get a 22 nanometer chip? Why would you want a brand new, updated, faster CPU when you can get something that was already discontinued and they have to recontinue it because they can't actually make anything new. Why would you want an overclockable $50 Athlon 3000 GE, or G rather, from AMD, when you can just get a Pentium 
22 nanometer Pentium. Now brand new again, thanks to Intel. You're welcome. And then last little bit of Intel news, there is a rumor floating out on the internet that Comet Lake, which is supposed to be the next refresh of Coffee Lake, which is supposed to bring us 10 cores on a mainstream desktop platform, will be launching in April. Alongside that, we're gonna be getting new motherboards, motherboard chipsets rather, with Z490, B5460, and then BH410, I think is the correct one, and it's gonna be on the new Socket LGA 1200. They will not be compatible with the current chips. You're gonna be just having to buy brand new stuff. Thankfully, it does look like even though the socket may be different, the mounting hardware should remain the same, so you won't have to buy brand new coolers for whatever reason Intel really needs to introduce another socket, probably to deliver all of that power to the 10 core, but we'll see where that goes. And we'll also see where NVIDIA is gonna go as they have filed trademarks officially now for Hopper and Ariel. In case you don't remember, we talked about in a previous hot news that Hopper seems to be the GPU name for the GPU architecture coming after Ampere. So the seven nanometer plus architecture is what we're looking at for Hopper, has been officially trademarked by NVIDIA. Whereas Ariel appears to be an SDK for GPU accelerated neural networks that NVIDIA is working on. So it doesn't have anything to do with normal mainstream people, but Hopper very well could be. And if you want more details, again, check out that video previously where we talked more in depth about it. But you want some in-depth stuff, I don't have it for you here with this next article. Bioshock is apparently getting a brand new game with 2K announcing a brand new studio cloud chamber to produce the new game. This is new, probably gonna come out in a few years. Apparently the studio head behind the chamber cloud has worked on XCOM and Civilization. So there's some big titles behind that. It could mean that the new Bioshock game is great, or it could mean that we're all disappointed with all the new games that are coming out. And really we're just gonna be satisfied with things that came out 10 years ago. Thank you, Minecraft. Thank you, Halo. Thank you, Modern Warfare. No, not that last one. Speaking of not that last one, not that RAM manufacturer anymore because I don't know where I'm going with this one. Changshin is now the first domestic DRAM supplier in China for their own DRAM. So they are now producing their own memory. Cool, there's a lot of political implications in that. But let's talk about the political implications of AMD still being on track for their next next generation of CPUs. Intel going backwards in life while AMD still marching forward with them coming out and saying that Zen 4 is still on correct pace to hit a 2021 launch with TSMC's five nanometer node looking to be on track. So everything seems to be up aces for AMD. They're gonna be good there. And in case you want a new graphics card from AMD, it looks like we're getting custom variants of the 5500 XT with the ASRock Challenger as well as a gigabyte card being pictured. And then there's also some EEC filings for an RX 5600 series, both a 5600 and a 5600 XT being shown up in the EEC. EC filings, which is just the Eurasian Economics Council uh, getting details about what people plan to release. Not everything makes it out to market, but it's a good indicator and it could possibly have six or eight gigabytes of VRAM, but AMD coming out hot and heavy with the mid to low end graphics cards. And they're also coming out with mid to low end feature sets with apparently them leaking their own feature updates that are supposed to come in the next Radeon driver update, putting it on their website in the AMD gaming details page, showing that they are indeed bringing integer scaling to the next update, as well as something called Radeon Boost, which is not yet known what that does, but integer scaling is a way of scaling up retro games, which Intel came out with as well as Nvidia. So AMD just putting this out in their GPUs is something that has been sorely missing for a little bit. And then speaking of TSMC, like we did previously, I'm just gonna backtrack on that one. TSMC is also on track to deliver three nanometers in 2022, at least according to them. So they're doing Rosalie. And speaking of Rosalie, bad, words there. Cougar apparently is officially launching their Conquer 2 chassis that they showed off at Computex. They don't have a price and they don't have a way to buy it. So I'm not sure how this is a launch, but it's officially launched. And this basically looks like the Cybertruck version of the original Conquer and does everything wrong to make me not want to buy it over the original Conquer. Cause the original Conquer was sleek yet aggressive and minimalistic. This is sleek and aggressive, but super complicated with edges everywhere and RGB here and glass panels there. 
having two giant glass panels on the original Conker was amazing. Having four little small ones and then a slide out tray from the motherboard. This is too much, Cougar. You lost the plot. You know who else has lost the plot? Game launchers on PC. You have Steam, you have Uplay, you have Origin, you have Rockstar, you have GOG. Well, guess what? GOG Galaxy 2.0, which is supposed to fusion dance all of them together, is now in open beta. Yes, the 2.0 version is now available for you to try in case you want to merge all of them with the Patara earrings, which works forever unless you retcon it in Super. Speaking of retcons, have you ever wished that you knew where your pizza was, but then you wish you didn't? Don't know what I'm saying there. Well, Domino's is apparently gonna be rolling out a feature where you can track the pizza delivery driver via GPS. This is kind of like that little flash thing where they show you where the pizza is along the process, which is not real because it's a flash player and they're not live updating that flash player. It's just, it's just feeding stored data. Speaking of something that came out a while ago, I'm talking about Domino's Flash Player, Wonderless, which was a to-do app that I used way back in the day when I first had my some of my original Android devices. I believe, what was it? Oh, it's the HTC Evo 3D? I think I had that. Anyways, Microsoft, who purchased the parent company of Wonderlist, is now shutting down Wonderlist on May 6th, so get your stuff out of there. But you know what you can get into is Minecraft with people on other consoles, thanks to PlayStation 4 finally updating it to be the Bedrock Edition so that you can play with your friends on the PS4 with Minecraft. The only issue is you're gonna have to have an Xbox Live account to log into it, but Minecraft now has crossplay on PS4. And speaking of PS4, Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the best games that came out for the PS4. And according to some mumblings out in the world, it should be announced for PC. They're expecting that this should either be announced at the Sony State of Play on December 10th, which is today, which may or may not have happened by the time this episode goes live. I doubt that would happen. Why would Sony announce that one of their exclusives is the cross launching? The more likely option is that it's going to be announced at the game, the video game awards that's going to be held on, I believe it's the 12th it's on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. And what you should also stay tuned for is ultimate value in your smartphones because OnePlus, the king of value flagship specs, OnePlus 7T Pro or 7T coming out with 90 Hertz displays, the highest end Snapdragon's great battery life. Well, it looks like according to some leaked renderings that there might be a OnePlus 8 Lite. So not only is the flagship level spec mid tier level price phone company holding that title, they're gonna come into the mid tier level phone and then drop the price to be budget level. This is gonna be some crazy stuff if they actually do it. OnePlus shaking up the game. And then finally, in an article that wasn't supposed to be last, or it actually was, and I'm just losing my mind, Nvidia has announced, thanks to their AI lab that is constantly working on neural networks, they've developed a algorithm that allows them to take 2D pictures of, let's say, birds, and then automatically turn them into 3D models so that you can get a full 360 image of a burb because you have a picture of it. But we all know birds aren't real. They're CIA agents come to spy on us. Just like this episode of Hot News, which is the reason why I have to end it because you're on to me. And I hope you get some of our merch onto you. We have some holiday merch on our store right now. If you check that out at the link in the video description, we've got our tech tree, both in white variants as well as RGB in case you want to rep tech, but also be in the spirit of the holidays. Check that out at the link in the video description. And also don't forget about today's video sponsor, Synergy. Get connected to multiple devices using one computer with their application. It makes life so much simpler, so much less cluttered. And I'm gonna stop cluttering your life with this episode. I'm out of here. Hit the like button, get subscribed, bye. Why, friends? Why would you? Dragon Ball! Dragon Ball! Damn it, Krillin.